Okay, so just tubes. And so what we'll find is if we curve those tubes, or S-curve those tubes, even when those tubes meet at corners, we'll continue the curve. Now they're going to start to be watery, start to have a little bit of life, even as they have um, a lot of depth, a lot of structure. And in fact, we can curve even the shadows, the tonal landscape, the half tones, the reflected light, the highlights, curve those as well so they also create the architecture, the volume, but they have the same energy. So when I say gesture, the simplest way, and I love simplicity, I want a 10-year-old to be able to understand this. The gesture is just making marks down the long axis, whether they're linear marks or tonal marks, and making those marks curved. Now, sometimes they won't be. Sometimes you might get oops, a stiff straight body part, front of the arm, certain angles of the, of the thigh can get very stiff and straight, a guarded attention at, the, at a shopping mall or a castle or something in Europe. Sometimes it's stiff and straight, but if you want, if it feels like you need more life in your drawings or paintings, you need more long axis curves. You need to draw those body parts. As structurally as you might ever want them to be. And structure simply means showing the audience how to move over the form, specifically to break the contour. Gesture means to move down the form. And if we draw any of these structures with long axis curves, notice we can even draw a box without ever drawing a straight line, is going to have a sense of curvature. We won't get into it, but oddly enough, a, a ball or an egg does not because it's symmetrical, symmetry. A curve is asymmetrical. A straight is symmetrical. What's here equals what's over here. A vase is symmetrical. So actually, this has a stiff straight no watery design, even though the contour might be incredibly watery, but it's canceled out on the other side. So we want that asymmetry in there to some degree. So there's more to that. That would be another lesson someday, and I've talked about it before. But just to know, tubes work very good with arms. And I say tubes because drawing a tube is easier than drawing a box. Now, in this instance, not a lot more difficult. Maybe for most of you, not more difficult at all, really, just more lines. But if we're drawing something that's organic, then finding that interior corner, where exactly does the side meet the top, can be difficult at times. Where do we take this round form and turn uh, chain, make it a, a corner. Usually following the light source helps. Whoops, wrong side. Light source. Where the shadow begins, that's a good place to get the corner. It might be a, 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 a chiseled, beveled corner, not the true front plane meeting the side plane. But if we look at the lightest light, it's hard to see myself in reverse on the screen. Lightest light, it's, it's going along the corner, basically where the 
front of the cheek meets the side of the cheek. Forehead meets the corner of the forehead, but that hot light there, this is a good practice actually. I don't know for what, but it is. Uh, you can see it ends at the front plane here, and it ends over on the temple over here. I'm going to do that anymore. I'm going to get dizzy. I'm looking at myself in reverse and trying to touch my finger to the right side. That's another skill that you're not going to learn from me, so I'm sorry about that. Um, there we go back now. Um, I was just checking the comments to make sure the sound's still on. So the arms work beautifully, and as I said, much of the upper body, and you can even make the head a tube and just maybe turn it into a capsule shape. It can even be a little tapering tube and stuff. But the upper arm works just fine as a tube. Forearm works very well as a tapering tube. So let's play with that for a second here. And you can make these two-dimensional. And the simplest way to connect things is if they're going in dis distinctly different directions, say the shoulder to the upper arm, they'll meet on a corner. And then you can always round off that corner in the rendering. Or you can chisel it off like a wood carver might do. But start with the corners when they go distinctly different. If they're going in roughly the same direction, upper arm to forearm, then make it a curve. If you're not sure, do what I just did there by instinct or by habit, actually. Make it a corner again, even though it's going roughly. They're going down, but this is going down and out. This is slightly going down and in. Could be a, a, a um, curve, but make it a corner because that'll, especially on the the limbs, that'll give us a sense of the joint, sense of the joint, the kneecap or the elbow. That bone tends to be a little sharper. And you can always round it off in the rendering stage. Like a, a wood carver with his chisel and sand pad. So that's kind of the process. And I won't go through all of the um, iterations of the arm and such. But basically because we're going to talk about how to attach it into the body. Basically, we want a tube for the arm, upper arm, tapering tube for the forearm. And we want them to have a sense of curve. The more curve we can give things, the more life it has. And what I'm interested in, to be clear here, is not not the watery, I'm going to move it out here, watery curve of all those, whoops, a little bump in my screen saver there all the watery curves that would go around the contour. I'm talking about that fundamental design, the fact that the, cur the, uh, the tubes themselves, the structures themselves are curved and not um, the wobbly little curves that make up every contour you might see on the body. Fundamental design. One of the rules I use as an artist, which bailed me out many a times and helped me find my style over time, is I'm going to screw things up. I know it because I'm not a camera. don't really want to be, but I 
frankly can't be because I've not graded proportions and some of the other things. So I'm going to err to the more dynamic. If it should be, if it's a shadow that's dark, It's a much better mistake to make the shadows way too dark. If you want the joke to be funny, it's a way better mistake to make the joke way too funny. In fact, in some real sense, you can't make it too dark. It'll never stop looking like a shadow if it's too dark, except maybe if you go black and white, then it gets more graphic, but works for comic books. And making the lights too light. So, and then, uh, so push it in the direction it's going. So in that sense, I'm going to make that long axis curve of whatever I'm drawing. Better to make it way too curved. That's a better mistake. That's how I've found my style over time, too. I'll push it farther than true, and then it's going to be a, a stronger, more powerful statement around the idea. Or I'll push things knowing my weaknesses. I'm not super patient. So I'm going to make the background even simpler and even darker than most realists would because it's easier. It's quicker. I won't get bored. I'll make the proportions bigger and more heroic. They're harder to criticize. So all those things can serve us well if we use them strategically. So play with that and iterate it. How curved is that whole arm? How tapered is that forearm? How long is the curve? Because the longer a structure is, the more curved it will become. I find generally that the upper arm's a little less curved than the forearm in most positions. So play with that. Iterate it, not a couple times, but a lot of times. Too straight, too curved. Find that sweet spot right in the middle that feels right to you. So we're going to do that. And then what we're going to find is the simplest way to connect a an arm to the body is to find the corner and notice or find the curve connections. Things that are going in generally the same direction, remember, will connect on a curve. The rib cage is connecting to the pelvis through the waist and the stomach on a curve because they're going in generally the same direction. If I make the what is a curve, a corner, I can always round it off, fill it in with a little clay in this case, later. So it's, so it's fine to make it a series of chiseled lines that are slightly curved with corners between them, and then round it off later in the finish. It's not so great if something is a corner and we make it a curve. Make the corners corners and the curves curves. So when I put the arm in the 
inside the body. Let's do it this way. When I put that inside the body, I want to do, I, I can't really get a, cur a corner or a curve connection because one thing's just floating inside the other. If I'm in a silhouetted position where the arms are on the outside and there's an outside contour between them, or an overlap between them. I can't see the fullness of this arm because it's hidden by the rib cage, but I can here. Now those are, they each have a outside contour that contours against the background, separates, seeing the corners. If they're going in generally the same direction, seeing the curves of the S curves they're going roughly the same direction. Move that out, uh, bad proportion, not that bad at proportion, so you can see the corner against it too. So, play with that. So when we get in, inside, and now we don't have that beautiful silhouette that we would have when we're sitting outside, The arms on the outside. That's easier. It's a corner usually. Every once in a while if it aligns, it's a curve. Inside I want to do two things. I want to find a corner anyway. I'm going to use the collarbone to the front. Or I'll use the shoulder blade to the back. And let's do this actually. And I want it out so I can do this. Or I can do this. I don't necessarily want to do both because I need an out. So maybe one or the other. And an out means that this discrete structure, whatever it is, on this discrete structure, whatever it is, doesn't just separate unless it just needs to separate, that we're bending over and the head's in front of the body. It needs to break its contour so this form can go out and flow into the next. And all that means is somewhere or another, we're going to see the arm end and become, start to become something else. And you may have no clue how to do that structurally, what that something else is. It still needs to break. Notice the gap here. Now these flow together. The audience will fill in the detail for us if we're not in a position, don't have the time or don't have the understanding to do it. So I'm gonna leave a gap. I'm not gonna bring it all the way up. Leave a gap. And I'm going to change the end of that line. Here's the arm. I'm just going to go off in a little bit different direction. Here's the back of the arm. I'm going to just hook it over. Or here's the arm, and I'm just going to glue it on with a darker line. All those things stop the eye from being on the arm and take off or fade off somewhere else. 
and we don't need to explain where that someplace else is structurally. We can. We could build another subtle structure on top of that. Say the deltoid, of course, and things. But we don't have to. So I want to have a corner, and I want to have an out. And notice the way I draw, drew the shoulder blade, and I stuck it out there too far so you could see it. The shoulder blade has an out, too. And let's say I did want to add this to it on both sides. Notice when I do both of those cross, now I don't have an out from the torso into the neck. It's cut off. And that's not appropriate, probably, in this view. So what I can do is I can just break the contour, break the line here. So again, we have a little out. So that's how we do it in line. And in tone, of course, we can have things set, cut, being cut off all the time. We can absolutely have a shape of the shadow of the shoulder three shish words in a row. I don't think I've done that at all today. And then the shadow covers those outs. So we might ha well have things cut off, a little triangle of light on the cheek and such. But in line, we want those outs. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Let me see if... Uh, good. Everybody sees everything very good. Okay. Uh, Katina says you're not seeing what I'm doing. You should be. You guys, uh, are you, you guys are seeing what I'm drawing, right? I'm hoping. Oh, geez. I'm so sorry. I'm going to post this tomorrow on our YouTube. Okay, some of you were seeing it, some of you weren't. Where I was at, I wasn't seeing it either. So I apologize for that for some folks. There was something I could click here to let other people access. Uh, so anyway, I will post this tomorrow. Usually uh, we don't post them for too long, um, but I'll leave it up for quite a while so you guys can catch up. So tell your friends it'll be up for a while. Okay, so that's our strategy. If we've got if we've got a um, an arm reaching up. Now, instead of having a shoulder that separates or a shoulder blade that separates at a corner, now it's connecting on a curve because they're going in generally, this is going up to the left, and this is going slightly down to the left and then leveling out. And notice if we get that gesture, that flow, we, we, or we don't uh, feel quite as disappointed that we don't have a good structure, and even quite as disappointed that we don't have good proportions. Of course, we want those things, usually, unless we're just uh, kind of fade, fading things off in a quick sketch. But um, if we get that gesture, it really feels good, feels true to your audience. And if we can get all the rest, fantastic. But gesture in some ways is the most important 
thing to pick up. But anyway, we can align that. So let's look at that shoulder blade area real quick while we have time. Now the shoulders are the most, the whole shoulder girdle area. Shoulders are by far the, the most Here's that little dot, it was driving me crazy. Um, most complicated area of the body anatomically and engineering wise, structurally, because of the freedom of movement that has to happen for the, um, in the arms so we can swing through trees and shoot basketballs and things that, na that, uh, that um, nature intended, makes them incredibly complicated. But, but even here, our connective strategy, before we get into all the anatomy and the engineering models and deep perspective ideas that we would want to do as craftspeople, at the beginning and throughout all of that complication, it's just corners and curves, as we've just discussed. So let's look at a, um, a very simplified rib cage. And what we'll find is there's a sagging triangle that sits on top of the shoulder line. That's the shrugging muscles, the trapezius. They let us uh, give that kind of shrug when we're not sure what the hell our friend just told us. That's a shrugging the trapezius. Like so. And you can see that anatomically, we think of the muscles of the neck and just the bones of the ribs, it's a Coke bottle. It's a teardrop with the end cut off. See, teardrops all over the place in the muscle forms. And then the arms are simply corners, and I'm going to give them a little bit of curvature. Or it's a corner every once in a while. We'll save how to do that another day. And it attaches on here somehow through the shoulder blades and a couple others. So let's do this. We do this. is all going on top of it. Let's do that for now. And then what I'm going to want to do, let's uh, dust this back a little bit. What I want to do is get the shoulder blades and they're just going to be an interior corner. And if I just do that, that now gives some sense of the thickness, like a rooftop on a house. Walls of the house go down, the rooftop the eaves pitch of the roof goes up. Give some sense of that. But we can make it a little more sophisticated. If it goes 
across to create a secondary interior corner. That's starting to move us over the form in some way. If we drop it down, this opens it up even more and we get even more of that pitch idea and it's closer to the anatomy usually. We want to drop that down. And then if we add an L to it, and I like to do a little double line there, because that's going to show us that the shoulder blade's on top of the shoulder, on top of the rib cage, which is where it needs to be to articulate that arm, for that arm to do its stuff. So we can do, when in doubt, simplify. We can just do that. We can just do that, or we could do that. But if you can break the contour somehow, the more you do that, the more structure you get. So notice right here, we're breaking the contour, that overlap, right here. And that adds believability. We're breaking the contour here to show that this is in front of the neck and the neck is behind that. So we want to break contours when we can because that's going to give more realism if that's our metric of success. The more I can break the contour, the more descriptive it is, the more structural it is. And then the more believable it is. So that's a trick on shoulder blades. Come in, break it. And this curve is fairly parallel. It can be very parallel. I'll make it more, a little more curved so it's bowing in, squeezing in to the, on the spine here. This can be a little curved as well. If things are dead straight, they don't feel very organic. And depending on the person you, you draw, if you have a model in class, I used to have them articulate their arms around, face towards the wall, their back towards the, the uh, class, and show as they move that arm up how the shoulder blade will actually rotate. And depending on the model, it'll rotate all the way up like this sometimes, but usually somewhere in here when the arm's way up here. But that's a, that would be another class to deal with that. So we want that corner. Let's uh, real quickly... Do the front view. We'll take that same shoulder line, that same Coke bottle idea, that same shrugging muzzle. Shrugging muscle, I said shrugging muzzle. For some reason, I'll never know. And now the neck is in front of the shrugging muscle. 
Getting the right overlap adds form. Giving it out adds form. Makes it more sophisticated. Shoulders are just corners or curves. We'll just make them both corners in this case. Now we want to break that contour again with now the collarbone. Collarbone is not the shoulder line. Shoulder line is just an arbor arbitrary imaginary line that connects oops, some convenient landmark on those shoulders to the other shoulder all the way over here. It's not anatomical. The collarbones are going to fall down a little or a lot, depending on how they're slumping. And you can make them curved. Do this on a. You can make them curved. Like that. Or you can make them S curved. Like so. If you want to, if you need to. You can create little bits of outs here, have it kind of come and go. Or be thicker and darker and thinner and more ghostly and then get thicker and darker again. And then it will kind of fade from view. But collarbones oftentimes will show themselves all the way through. If you look at the, uh, at the uh, Rococo area, uh, era, high Renaissance, um, all through there, a lot of neoclassical artists, no collarbones. You can't find a collarbone. They didn't exist back then. So we grew those in somewhere between the mid-1800s and now, I guess. So there, and then overlaps again. The, not the back, but the chest. And again, you can give a little out to it. You could just darken it. You could turn it up across the big peck, or you can wrap it over towards the deltoid on the outside, which is what it does anatomically. You can take your pick. And notice until you get Some of that back on that we looked at, shoulder blade area, traps, for those of you who know what those are, or I'm sorry, latris, uh, latissimus, lats. Uh, you won't know if the shoulders are too wide. So once I get that chest or that breast and chest, set in there with the armpit, I won't know if I goofed up the proportions. So a good argument for drawing lighter. Just lose that, I guess. Well, no, we don't want to lose that. And make sure it's then overlapping as much as it needs to overlap. And if it opens up a lot, then you can get a space in there, and you would in, in these, but like so.
feeling that. And it's a, notice what I just did there. It's not a bad strategy. I do it quite a bit, actually. But if I make it a little too fat, as I had it before, it doesn't do a lot of damage to the, to the um, connections. If I make it really wide, that's a problem because it's not going to connect there. But if I make it a little chubby, if it squeezes those arms a little bit too much, then I can just either add on a little bit more to the arms. or take a little away from the rib cage. So I'll usually make the torso especially a little chubby and then I can always trim it off. I'll oftentimes make the whoops, the uh, arms a little chubby. and then I can trim it off. So screw it, knowing which way to screw up. That's also that error that to the more dynamic. And then you can always add more this, less that, and correct it. Okay, so let's stop there because we've gone pretty late, but we started pretty late. Um, see if you're still in there before collarbone. That's right. Yeah, shoulder blades can be tricky. Uh, so we'll, we'll maybe do a little bit more of uh, this next week. And, uh, or, well, no, we're going to have an interview next week with Stephanie, actually. Um, but uh, maybe the week after we'll do a little bit more. You're very welcome, Gustav. All right, my friends, I'll let you go there. Thanks for hanging with me and, and waiting, waiting while I waited through that uh, technical nonsense. And we will see you next time. You guys have a beautiful, beautiful weekend and a safe one.